Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Ben Olson, co-founder of LSATdemon.com and our weekly podcast, Thinking LSAT. With me today is Eric Johansson. Teacher, podcast <laughs> producer, <laughs> all around nice guy. The man know, who needs no introduction, yeah. Apparently. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. We yeah. got an email from Catherine. Catherine says, hi guys. I know you said that we should take as many times as we need to get a desirable score on the LSAT. However, I recently discovered this site that many law schools being quoted here are saying that they take the average when they see multiple LSAT scores. Do you mind sharing your thoughts about this? And the site, I think, goes to a blog post or an article written by some other test prep company. And we won't go into the whole thing, but <laughs> bolded down near the bottom is it's still the best advice to take the test only once. It's good to know that retaking the test is now a much more viable option than in the past, but you uh, want to do this. Study hard, work it out, and get your highest score the first time you take it. Then you won't ever have to worry about it again. Yeah, we definitely have thoughts on that. But Catherine continues, I'm a little concerned when I read this because I scored really closely on my first three attempts, 162, 163, 164. According to Berkeley, for example, they might consider the average of these three scores. Instead of evaluating my application based on my fourth attempt, I wonder if law schools would think that the first three scores better represent my ability and choose to ignore the anomaly high score in my fourth attempt. Thank you so much for reading my email. Look forward to hearing you, hearing from you in future episodes. Best regards, Catherine. We hear this a lot, don't we, do, don't we Ben? Yeah, we do. And this, this article is just muddying the waters, although it's interesting because it talks about things that happened way back in June of 2006. Mm -hmm. It then gives examples from February of 2003. Um, to the extent any of this information had merit, it's not applicable today. I think the thing that Catherine is latching on onto is down mm. at the bottom of this page this company has basically just drawn quotes from different schools admissions pages yeah and is quoting what the school has said about their policy and you have a school like well cornell in general cornell law's policy is to take the higher score if it if it is at least three points higher than a prior score but the admissions committee invites applicants to submit an addendum to their application explaining the difference LSAT scores and why we should take the higher LSAT score. And there's something that happens there is Cornell invites you to submit an addendum. And I think having looked through these earlier, they are not the only ones. Here's University of Michigan. It would be helpful to address any explanation for the difference in an optional essay or addendum. Yeah, I think so there are other ones as well, but there are in general these schools that are saying, "Hey, we we might look at a, your all of your scores. Maybe submit an addendum." Yeah, that's really interesting. Okay, so there there's a couple things going on here. One, they're not saying they're going to average, no. right? They're just saying, "Hey, we're going to see all your scores." So let's just make this process as opaque as possible. <laughs> we will review them all. But you Chicago notice says, we do not average. We look at all your scores, but we do not average. And what you're getting to, right, Eric, is the fact that if your scores do change, which they often do when you take the test multiple times, they're saying, hey, please let us know why. There's a good chance, we don't know what their actual motivation is, but there's a good chance that their motivation is to discover whether or not you got accommodations. Because a lot yeah. of times accommodations can explain a huge score increase, um, but they are not allowed to ask that directly because that's barred by the ADA. So there's things going on beneath the surface here. And the bottom line is the only score they have to report is to the ABA and thus to US News and World Report ranking is the highest score. That's the only one they have to report and it's the only one that they will report. I mean, what foolish school would report a lower score that would just hurt them? So 
at the end of the day, they know that that's the number that's going to move the bottom line for them. So they are not, almost certainly not going to average unless they're hurting themselves. And so don't worry about any of this. Just keep taking the test until you get the highest score you can get. And that's what you're going to apply with. And if they ask you to explain why your score has changed, simply say, I knew I could do better. My practice tests indicated that I could score better. Yeah. Yeah. And also just the question about whether a high score might be seen as an anomaly. I mean, that's just not how this test works. You can't luck your way into a high score. You just can't. Some amount of luck might explain like why you get one question wrong or right on a given day compared to whether you would have gotten it on a previous day, but you just don't luck your way into a high score. Those anomalies don't exist. It's like, it's like saying, I don't know, the Olympics are coming up. So some track and field athlete who was like, well, this javelin thrower, his previous javelin throw attempts were all like, yeah, 50 meters, 51 meters, 52 meters. I have no idea whether that's realistic or not on how far <laughs> you might throw a javelin. But then there was this one time when he threw it 75 meters. Mm -hmm. You don't throw that out as an anomaly. That indicates how far you can throw a javelin. Yeah. Just like if you score a 170, that indicates you can score a 170. Yeah. It tells you something about how well you read, how well you think through arguments and law schools have to recognize that totally well and also i mean Catherine kind of sets up an easy example here because she says i wonder if law schools would think that the first three better represent my ability but every law school knows that scores improve over time so yeah. if if you take the test and you get a 145 officially that's a, a an unfortunate waste of a test but if you do that and then you come back with a 165 or even a 175. They know that you did something in between. You prepared. Everyone out there is preparing. Everyone else is trying to get better at this test. It, no one would do that if scores didn't change. So going up is totally normal and to be expected. Yeah. Anyways, Catherine, don't worry about it. Sorry for the misinformation that's out there. Can't do anything about it, but... Thanks, Catherine. Email daily at lsatdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school admissions news. Thanks for listening.